God bless you. Tonight, you know, I've been asked to share a bit of a message. You know, here in Montrose, obviously, like everybody else, the church is closed um, because of the, the current situation. We, ha we can't have any meetings in the church, so this is what these messages is for. And tonight would be our Thursday night meeting. Um, so I've been asked to share a bit of a message. So if you can tonight, please, let's pray. And let's ask that the Lord will, will minister to us, that the Lord will speak to us through his word. Let's ask that, you know, the Lord knows each and every hearer. So let's ask that the Lord will, will speak and minister through his word tonight. Lord, my God, I just want to ask you this night, my God, in Jesus' name, my God, Lord, to minister, to minister, my God, through this video tonight, my God. Begin to speak to hearts and lives, my God. Lord, you know each and every hearer, my God, of this video, Lord. And I pray, my God, in your precious name, my God, the Lord, you would use us, my God, to speak to people, my God, to encourage, my God, to uplift, my God, to do many wonderful things, O Lord Jesus. Use me, my God, as a vessel for you, my God, as I preach this message. In Jesus' name, my God, help me, my God, to speak your word correctly, my God. I just ask you, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus this night. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, I'm going to be reading a piece of scripture from the book of Judges. Um, Judges chapter 6. And I'm going to read from verse 11. And you know, it's a story of a man called Gideon. Many of us, many of us know this man. I've read this, read about this man at some point. And the Bible says this, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abizarite. Well, well, his son Gideon threshed wheat and the winepress in order to hide to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about? Saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us, and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, O my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. You know, as I looked at this piece of scripture, as I looked at this piece of scripture, you know, the work and the ways of the Lord, you know, it still, it still encourages me so much. I see the things that the Lord does in men's life, and you read in the Old Testament, the many, you know, the many men of faith, in the Old Testament and you see what the Lord has done and how the Lord has used them and you know it still, it still surprises me his work and what he does you know this man this man Gideon you know that Israel at this time was under oppression of the of the Midianites and every time that they had anything and any time that they got their the you know the the bits of uh, stuff in their grains and you know their their crops and you know, their animals and whatever they had, these people would come and they would they would rob them. You know, they would plunder what they had, they would destroy what they had, and they would take anything they could from them. And what that started to do, it started to drive fear. It started to drive fear into Israel. And you know that it got to a point where they were hiding. They were hiding from these people because they knew that yearly these people would come and rob and take everything that they had, and they would begin to hide from them. But you know, the Lord... The angel of the Lord, which which is Jesus Christ, you know, he came and he sat under this tree, and you know, he seen he, he seen Gideon, and Gideon is is threshing wheat in a wine press. Now, to understand this, is he's in he's in a a low down, bricked in area basically, and he's beginning to he's he's trying to thresh wheat. Now, any of us know that when th wheat is being threshed. It's got to be taken in a high place with some sort of wind and, 
you know, tossed up so that the wind can blow the chaff away and keep the good stuff. You know, I can only imagine the, the, the hardness that he had trying to do this in this, this, this wine press because the fear that was in him. But the Lord knew this. The Lord knew what was going on and the Lord knew this. And you know, as, as, the, as the Lord is watching him and, and seeing why he's doing what he's doing because of the fear of this people, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. He addresses this fearful man. The Lord he, he addresses this fearful man in a very peculiar way. A man who is, fe is afraid of the Midianites, so he's threshing wheat in a wine press down in a low down area, hiding away. Israel is continually hiding from the oppression. But the angel of the Lord calls him a mighty man of valor, which means basically that you are a mighty warrior. Now this man to me and you does not come across as a mighty warrior, he does not come across as a mighty warrior to me. He becomes, to me he comes across as a man who's full of fear. Full of fear of the situation around him, they're under oppression, there's many hard things happening. And you know the reason why you know I believe the Lord has given me this message is because today that we're living in, we're seeing things happening that is it's something that most of us has never seen before. I know that even the older generation hasn't seen some of the things that's happening today. You know the fear throughout the world, the whole world, the whole planet that we live on is full of fear today. It is full of fear of this virus. And you know I understand that people have been careful and it's it's a bad illness. It's a bad it's a bad thing. But what is happening, the enemy is driving fear in throughout the whole world because of it. And you know, the reason why I, why I believe the Lord has given me this message is because it's showing me that, you know, this man can remembers me of, you know, what we see in the world today. Trying to hide away, trying to be secluded, trying to, to be by yourself and, and, and just trying to be safe. And you know, I know that's not a bad thing. I know that's not a bad thing today, what's going on in the world today, trying to keep yourself away and doing what we're told. But the Lord addresses him of a mighty, mighty warrior, a mighty warrior. Gideon said to him, "O oh my Lord, if the if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us?" You know that maybe be our question tonight. That maybe be our question tonight. Then, if the Lord is with us, then why is all this happening to us? Why is all this happening to the Christians? Why is all this persecution happening? These people are persecuted in the Bible here that we're reading about. Why is it happening to the believers tonight? Why is it happening to the believers today? In the world that we live in, why is all these things happening? You know, we begin to question it, and just like Gideon says to him, he's been dressed as a mighty warrior. And you know, you might not believe it tonight, but for the child of God, we have we are very, very powerful. We have power through the Holy Spirit. We have power through the work, of, the finished work of the cross at Calvary. We have power. We have there is mighty power in prayer. We have the, you know, the the Bible tells us that the the word of God that, that I'm reading tonight, you know, is our sword and is our weapon against the work of the enemy, and we have that, we have that tonight. And you know something, we must use it. We must use it. Gideon says, "Well, why is all these things happening? If God is with us, why is all these things happening?" That may be the same question you've got tonight. Why is all these things happening? If God is with us, why are they happening? Why is it happening? Where are all the miracles which our forefathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Just like this man, where is the Lord? What is the Lord doing? Well, you know, I believe that we are reaching more people today with these videos and, and thank God for the faithful brothers that's preaching the word of God and that these videos are getting out. And I believe that we're reaching people. I've already had people tell me that there's people listening to these videos, watching these videos, that will not even come to church. Being asked and won't come to church, but they're, they're getting the word of God through these videos. And I, I thank the Lord from the bottom of my heart for that. God has taken us back to the essentials. God has taken us back to what we think is the basics, is actually the essentials. God has taken us back to what's really important in life. What is really important in life? And for me and you, there is only one thing important in life, and that is Jesus Christ and what he has done for me and for you. In these times of trouble, in these hard times, in these times of worry and concern, there is nothing else in the world that we can have. Only Jesus Christ. We need to turn our eyes upon him. We know what the Bible told us. We know what the Bible says about the works of God. We know about the things that God has done in the Old Testament. We see about this finished work at the cross of Calvary in the New Testament. God is still on the throne. God is unchanging. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that, you know, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He has not changed. 
He is still the mighty, powerful, working, miracle worker God. He is still doing the same things today that he did then. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall give Israel. You shall save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? The Lord said, Go. The Lord said, Go, and you will save. Listen, we can sit and we can be full of fear tonight. We can be full of anxiety and we can be full of what ifs, could be's, and maybes. But I promise you tonight we must cling to the Lord, we must cling to his word, and we must trust what he says in his word. We must trust what he says in his word. You know that there is there is many people who has this virus. You know there is Christians, there is ministers who has got this virus and their wives. And you know what we need today is we need to pray and we need to seek the face of God and you know ask that God, only God, can change the circumstance. You know, I believe that God is doing something today in this this world that the Christians is beginning to cling and the, the Christians is beginning to realize that we really need to draw close to God in these times. We really need to draw close to God in these situations. There is nothing else in the world. Money, motors, you know, trailers, houses, yards, nothing can do for us what God can do for us. All these things have become very, very unimportant in the current situation. All these things have become very, very invaluable in the current situation. And we must remember that tonight that God has sent, God says to Gideon, I have sent you. God says go and I have sent you. When God chooses you, when God wants to use you for a mighty work, we must listen to the voice of the Lord. You have a decision tonight. You can listen to this message and you can go away to your bed and do whatever you need to do. Or we can begin to pray. As believers throughout the whole world, we can begin to pray and say, you know something, Lord, we need you. We need you more now than ever. We need you more now than ever. Things, The world is falling apart around us. God is still on the throne tonight. So he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Not only is he saying he comes off one of the weakest clans, but he's also, you know, the little the, the, the you know the one who's so less important in the whole household, never mind the clan. But when you look with physical eyes, nothing happens. When you begin to look with spiritual eyes, God does a mighty work, God does wonderful things. And the Lord said to him, I, surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Surely I will be with you, and you shall meet, defeat the Midianites as one man. You know what Gideon did? Gideon got up and he listened to the voice of the Lord. He got up and he get, listened to the voice of the Lord. He never, he never stayed in fear. He never, he never stayed in uh, seclusion. He never stayed in that wine press. He got up and he did what the Lord had told him. You know, his father had uh, altars to Baal and, you know, the Asherah poles and all, all these things that f f for goddesses and all these pagan worship. Gideon got up in the night and destroyed the lot. He was risking his life to do what he did, but he listened to the voice of the Lord. And for me and for you tonight, and let's listen to this video. Do not let the enemy control your mind. Do not let the enemy control your life tonight. I understand that we live in bad days. I understand that these times are hard. But you know something, we serve a great God. We serve a risen Saviour. We serve a God of the impossible. And just like this man, he used, he used Gideon. He used Gideon for his work. And he used Gideon to do what he said he was going to use Gideon to do. Gideon went forward in the work of God. And you know, Gideon faced massive armies. Massive ar armies. And you know, because he had, because he had the, the Lord on his side, because the Lord says here, I will be with you. He was able to defeat any army that came against him. Even at one point, he was down to 300 men facing thousands. And, it, you know, it, he succeeded because of who he had by his side. And that is the same for me, and that is the same for you tonight. You know that there is bad situations, but we have a better God. We have a greater God. You know the God who created this whole universe. He cares for me and he cares for you tonight. And he, as the Bible says here, when he says to get in, I will surely be with you. We know that the Bible says, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. You know, the enemy wants to keep you and fill you with fear. But you know, let's start, let's start, you know, the, let's, we're using social media. Let's use social media to glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's show the world that the Christian, you know, we have faith in this God that we believe in. That we know this God that we believe in. We know that he is able to do, to do the, the mighty things, the wonderful things, the miraculous things. That he calls Gideon a mighty warrior in the beginning. I see a, a, a man afraid 
a week. God sees a warrior. You know, it's not about what we see tonight, but it's about what God sees and what God uses. And let God use you and let God use me tonight. God is so good. You know something, we have Jesus Christ. We have his finished work at Calvary. You know, Jesus came and he died and he rose again, defeating death, defeating sin, defeating everything that the enemy had so that we could have life. That we could have life. You know, if you listen to this video tonight, I, I just want to ask you that. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says your sin separates you from a true and living God. And the Bible says that all wrongdoing is sin and that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. The Bible says that Jesus speaking, he says in, in the book of John, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You need Jesus Christ tonight. There is only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ, and that is through his finished work at the cross at Calvary. You know that he died upon that cross for me and for you, and the Bible says that he rose again on the third day, defeating everything that the enemy had for me and for you. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Send it back into heaven, and now speaks on my behalf tonight. We need Jesus more now than ever. Cling to what we know, cling to the word of God, cling to what we have. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior tonight, repent, turn from your sin, turn from your life of sin and turn to Jesus Christ. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Think about that tonight. Think about that tonight. God is so good. If God can use a man like, like Gideon, he can use me and you. He can use me and you tonight. Let's cling to the cross. Let's cling to the work of the, God, the Lord. God is good tonight. We must believe that. We must understand that. God is still on the throne. God is not finished here. God is a mighty work in this country and he will continue to do it through this situation. God will use this for his glory. But we must believe that tonight. We must just continue to have faith in that tonight. You know, we must cling to it tonight. God bless you.